this is Activity with Antiquity. One, two, one, two, three, four. I recently attended the Rust Belt Takeover in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with the Sixth City Young Preservationists, and we had an amazing time. Our journey began with a seven-hour car ride, which put us arriving very late Thursday night, or more accurately, early Friday morning. Here you can see us sleepily stumbling into the pitch black darkness of our Airbnb. And not quite five hours of sleep later, we got to briefly appreciate the beauty of the 1886 Victorian house we were staying in before going across town to the Basilica of St. Joseph. It. Completed in 1901, this National Historic Landmark was the spiritual and social gathering place for Polish Catholics who made up Milwaukee's second largest immigrant population. The interior is absolutely breathtaking, with its intricate details, stained glass, and murals which so elegantly grace the walls and ceilings. And the exterior did not disappoint either. I hit record just in time to catch the bells ringing as we were leaving. Next, we got a surprise tour of Tripoli Shrine, which is also on the National Register of Historic Places. This Masonic temple's design was based on the Taj Mahal in India and completed in 1928. If the gorgeous dome and fancy windows don't impress you, then check out the billiards room with its original sliding score tallies. And I mean, when was the last time you saw camels in architecture? I mean, so cool, right? And the building is covered in mosaics. And I mean, there are mosaics and mosaics and mosaics and mosaics and mosaics and mosaics everywhere. Then after one last look at the temple, we venture to the 1898 Milwaukee Public Library. This National Register site and city landmark draws from both Italian and French Renaissance styles. And the imposing columns draw the eye up toward the dome to emphasize the volume of the space. Unlike the previous two sites, you could actually go all the way to the highest floor. Notice that I'm standing considerably farther from the railing than the rest of my friends due to my fear of heights, a theme that will come up later. Although I did manage to get this shot over the railing. This is just for you guys. And yeah, that's enough. So it totally made sense for me to later suggest parking at the top of the tallest parking garage I've ever seen. An activity which I still find worth it for the views. And here's me squinting at the sun and the only selfie I took the entire trip. And behind me is the 1876 Mitchell Building, which is perhaps better seen from the ground. This National Register commercial building is a high-style French Second Empire, and to put it colloquially, it has all of the schmancy features you'd expect, including the millennia-long tradition of half-nude figures holding up stuff. At the lakefront, we visited the War Memorial Center, built in 1955 by architect Aero Saarinen. This place really is a modern masterpiece which deserves its own video, quite frankly. And as cited by the Milwaukee Museum of Art, the New York Times called it, one of the country's finest examples of modern architecture put to work for civic purposes. This was one of my favorite buildings we saw that day and it only got better seeing its neighbor. The 2001 Art Museum features movable wings which control the lighting of the atrium and they resemble the sails of a ship on the Great Lakes. Inside the structural theme is consistent and this hall of flying buttress supports reminds me of being inside a space station. Inside, we were also loving these Andy Warhols, and they have a mid-century furniture collection like no other, including architect design chairs by Frank Gehry, Robert Venturi, and Frank Lloyd Wright. So yeah, I couldn't help but totally nerd out in this section. Anyway, Friday was jam-packed. The art museum and all the places we visited were absolutely amazing, and you can probably tell that I left a lot of stuff out of this video. However, I wanted to properly highlight our last location of the day, and actually our first official Rust Belt Takeover tour of the weekend, which I think many would agree was a favorite. Completed in 1895 of 8 million bricks, Milwaukee City Hall is a prominent example of Flemish Renaissance architecture that's not to be missed. Standing in at 353 feet tall, the clock tower is 40 feet taller than that which holds Big Ben, and that's minus the flagpole. Senior planner for the Historic Preservation Commission, Tim Askin, gave us an incredible tour which included a look into the council chamber, as well as this outstanding stained glass window which predates the building. Then we stared up in awe at the impressive eight-story atrium. Thin columns support each floor except where they are missing on the ground level. This angle may appear to be unstable in the sense of traditional columns which are typically compressed under the load that they carry. However, these columns are held in tension and instead suspend the floors from a complex rafter system located above the skylight. This hidden space between the interior and exterior skylights allowed us to also see under the main roof structure and access what was once the clock keeper's living quarters. Here we also saw some impressively large sections of an old clock face and hands before ascending up the tower which was, for me, an experience of mixed feelings because again, heights. Climbing the spiral staircase, we occasionally stopped for cool views of the city until we reached Solomon Juno, the 11-ton bell named for Milwaukee's first mayor. According to the city hall, it was put in the tower in 1896 and was made from melted tin and copper from old church and firehouse bells. Go up 
up another floor and you can embrace your inner Peter Pan and find four 18-foot diameter clock faces. Together they make up what was once believed to be the largest four-sided clock in the world at the time of completion. And for those braver than me, you can go up a very tall staircase to an observation platform that's just big enough for four people. My sentiments that day were, and here's where I'm not going. But for the few of us who stuck around to the end, we got to walk out onto the main roof for some spectacular views, while this lone bird was staring at us in a state of confusion. This is how I fell in love with Milwaukee. It was the perfect activity to end the first day of our adventure, and I can't wait to show you part two.